What's up everybody? If you're thinking about installing drywall in your basement on your own, I have one piece of advice for you. Do not do it. But if you're like me a few months ago and you're stubborn and want to do it on your own for that personal satisfaction, here are my best tips and tricks for getting a good drywall installation in your basement. Let's get into it. So in the last couple of videos of the basement finishing series, we installed rigid foam insulation, we framed the walls, and then we installed electrical. So now we're all teed up to start installing the drywall. So the previous owners of this house did a little bit of framing with metal studs. So what I'm doing right now is installing the drywall on the metal stud sections. And the only difference for installing drywall on metal studs is you need a self-tapping drywall screw. And this is gonna basically make sure that you're able to secure the drywall to the metal studs. Secure the drywall with screws every 16 inches on center, but some people will even secure it every eight inches on center. Just don't skimp on the screws. Also note the drywall comes in various thicknesses, but I used half inch drywall for all the drywall in my basement. As you can see here, I had to do a creative cut at the top there to contend with the HVAC soffit, and then we're securing it just like we did before. I'm gonna cover how to cut drywall and all of that in a few minutes. Also, you'll see here that this drywall is green. I got a lot of this drywall from a buddy of mine who finished a basement and had a lot of leftovers. The green drywall is just mold resistant drywall, so I use that wherever I could. Here I am noting the general location for that electrical box, and then I hung the drywall at the top and used a router to actually scribe around the electrical box. They make a specific tool for cutting around electrical boxes, and I'll link that in the video description. So I installed the first sheets vertically, and now I'm moving on to horizontal. I don't know why I went back and forth. I should have probably found one orientation and stuck with it, but I had my brother help me lift that first one, and then I installed the second one, cut around the receptacle box there, and then there's a window here. And what I did is I just hung the drywall over the window, and then I went back later with a utility knife and a straight edge to cut around the window framing. One thing to note real quick, you're always gonna wanna install drywall on the ceiling first, but because I installed a drop ceiling in my basement, I didn't have to worry about installing drywall on the ceiling. I just had to do the walls. If you're hanging drywall on your own, you can mark four foot and a quarter inch from the top of where you want the drywall to hang and you can install some temporary screws. Here's a look at that installed at four foot and a quarter inches and then four foot and a quarter inches on the other side. That way you can lift the board horizontally, rest it in place on those screws, make any adjustments. And then once everything looks good, you can actually attach the drywall every 16 inches on center. After hanging the sheet of drywall, I cut around the receptacle box and then I cut out the window. This time I used a drywall saw to actually cut this one out and I got a better result. Moving on to the bottom here, you can see that I have a tool right there that's gonna allow me to lift the drywall up so that it's perfectly flush with the drywall above. I'll link that tool in the description. It's pretty low tech. And for any drywall job, you're obviously gonna need to know how to cut the drywall. Fortunately, they make a drywall straight edge that hooks on the edge of the drywall, and then you simply need to take a utility knife and score along the paper of the drywall. Then it simply snaps right along that scored line really easily, then just take a utility knife on the opposite side and cut the piece free. They make something called a drywall rasp, which you can use to clean up the edges. But honestly, unless the edges are really bad, you probably don't need it. But honestly, I'm really not all that good at drywall. So maybe a rasp was exactly what I needed more of. So after cutting that piece of drywall to the correct length, I just installed it every 16 inches on center maximum, and you can do eight inches on center as the minimum spacing. So here I am cutting the bottom piece below the piece we just installed, and as you can see, scribing it, cutting it along the line of paper, and then putting it in place. What I'm doing here is I'm just drawing the location of the outlet box. I usually just write that on the piece of drywall, then I installed it in place, took the measurement, and transcribed the bottom right corner of where I can find that electrical box. Usually I'll just scribe around a spare electrical box to get a general idea of where I'm gonna be running this, and then use your router or roto zip to go counterclockwise around the box that you marked. I then finished installing the drywall screws around the box. Also, you wanna install your drywall screws so that they're just slightly recessed into the drywall. You don't want them sticking out. And I installed a sheet of mold resistant drywall near the door since I thought it would experience a little more moisture being by the door. And then I marked the location of the switch box and then scribed that out the same way we've done with all the rest with the router tool. You can use a drywall saw for this, but the moral of the story is you don't wanna damage the wires on the inside of the box. So be careful of those. Now, let me show you how I drywalled around the window. I started by cutting the top piece of the window out to the correct size. And this is so it would butt up flush against the window trim. And so that it would also be perfectly in line with the drywall that made up the wall. Once everything looked good, I secured it in place and that gap at the back, we're gonna fill with quarter round later. 
For the sides, I cut it to the right height and I left it a little bit long so that I could scribe along the face of the drywall. And then I simply scored along that line and cut it in place. That way, when I stuck the piece of drywall back in the window well, it was perfectly flush with the front of the wall. I secured it in place after everything looked good and then I moved on to the final wall. I measured the height. Again, I cut it a little bit long, put it in place, and then I'm gonna scribe where it meets the face of that wall there. Running the utility knife along the line, snapping it in place, cutting the paper on the opposite side, and then securing it in place. Just like before, you want the drywall screws to be slightly recessed into the paper. So based on the way I framed around my HVAC ductwork, I was able to attach the vertical section of drywall directly to the OSB. I'll link that framing video above so you can see exactly how I did that. And then underneath the duct, I simply attached the drywall to the mounting studs that are on either side of the duct. This was the perfect height for me to use my head as a third arm to hold it in place. And I had to cut a notch out for that support post in the middle there. As you can see, I let the drywall be a little bit long and then I scribed it to the right length and snapped it off after it was installed in place. Here you can see that it was a little bit of some creative geometry. I installed a large piece and then I used the utility knife to scribe around that 90 degree bend in the ductwork. Then I used a router to cut out the vents. Okay, so now that we've hung the drywall, it's time to go Daniel Craig on them and get our knives out drywall knives. So the first step in finishing drywall is we're going to take some joint compound and a six inch drywall knife and we're going to apply the compound to the seam between drywall sheets. I like to take my putty knife sideways and just apply a good layer of the compound. Then I like to find the middle of the seam within the compound using my knife by turning it sideways. Then you're going to take some drywall tape and apply it down the middle of the seam. Use your hand to kind of push it in place and then you're going to cut off any excess by putting your drywall knife against it and just ripping along the knife. Then you want to get out any of the excess drywall mud, but also leave a good layer of the mud on top of the tape. Now again, I'm not a pro at this, but the first step in finishing drywall is just to put the tape over the seams for all of the drywall in your application area. And here I am repeating this process for a vertical seam between drywall sheets. I'm going to apply a thin layer of compound to the seam. Then I'm going to take a piece of tape and apply it down the center of the seam. Next, remove any of the excess joint compound and try not to have any abrupt edges or lumps. The smoother it is now, the less sanding you'll have to do in the future. Repeat this process for all the drywall seams that are in your basement. Additionally, as part of the first taping coat, you want to apply a layer of mud over each of the screw holes. For inside corners, you're still going to use drywall tape, except the tape has a crease down the middle. What you're going to do for the inside corners is just fold the tape along that crease to get a 90 degree angle like you're seeing here. Then you're going to apply mud to the corner, stick the crease tape at the 90 degree angle within the inside corner, and then apply a little bit more of the mud. Let me show you what I mean. So for this inside corner, I'm applying a little bit of the joint compound to both sides of the corner. Then I'm creasing the tape down the middle to get a 90 degree angle, pushing the tape into the corner and then smoothing out any of the excess joint compound. So although drywall tape can be used on inside corners, outside corners require something called corner bead. There's a bunch of different types of corner bead, but for my drywall project in my basement, I went with paper face corner bead, which I basically just install right over top of the corners and it gives you a nice smooth transition from one side to the next. So for this outside corner, I'm applying joint compound to both sides of the corner. Then I'm taking my corner bead, I'm cutting it to the appropriate height, pressing it into the joint compound, and then I'm removing any excess from behind the bead. Here I am showing how I got the length for the windows. Then I used some snippers to cut the corner bead to the right height. Then I repeated this measuring and cutting process for the top of the window and the other side. Then I applied joint compound to all of the surfaces, positioned and pushed the corner bead into place, and then I removed any of the excess joint compound with a putty knife. Again, try to make it as smooth as possible to minimize the sanding you're gonna have to do later. In my basement, I had to install a lot of corner bead around the soffit drop, around all of the outside corners. It was a lot of work. This is one of the reasons why hiring it out might be the best bet. It really did take a lot of time for me to complete this. So after taping all the seams, inside corners and outside corners with corner bead, here's what your basement will look like. So after installing the tape with our six inch knife, the drywall finishing process is basically just to use two more passes of a drywall knife to feather out the edge and make it less noticeable. So you start with a six inch for the tape, then you're gonna use either a 10 inch or an eight inch knife to go a little bit wider than the initial six inch. And then finally, you're gonna come in with a 12 inch knife 
to make it even a little bit wider. The goal here is just to apply a couple coats of the drywall mud to make the joint as inconspicuous as possible. There's a lot of really great videos on YouTube that go into the drywall finishing process, and because I'm not a pro, I'm not gonna show you how I did it because there's better instruction out there. I just wanna give you the overview of the process. So as I mentioned, here I am taking a pass with the 10 inch knife. I'm gonna feather out the initial six inch pass. Then I let that dry overnight, came back and did the 12 inch pass. And after that dried, it was time to sand everything down. Obviously wear a respirator for this. I'm using a 120 grit sanding screen to sand everything down and get it smooth. And although this is a time lapse, this was a pretty iterative process. I ended up having to go back and apply a little bit more mud in a few locations. It's just a pain in the butt. And if you're not a pro at drywall, this is gonna take you a long time, which is why I said it's probably not worth it. You could probably have a company come in here, knock this out in a fraction of the time and probably only for a couple thousand dollars, which is probably worth it. Another drawback of being a DIY drywaller is you're probably going to do so much more sanding than a professional would, which is going to result in a lot of dust and a lot of mess, which is another pain in the butt to have to contend with. And finally, after vacuuming up all of the remaining drywall dust, all that was left to do was to prime the walls and then I did one coat of paint to give us the final result that you're seeing now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see how I installed the LVP flooring and how I installed the drop ceiling, which will be the next two videos in the basement finishing series. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.